on today's menu, a delicious and easy recipe that won't make you feel awful. Falafel and tahini sauce. Lei Hong Ma, I'm Will Young from YoungManCooking.com. Welcome to the channel where you can cook with confidence. Falafel is one of my favorite things to eat because it is absolutely delicious and it may come as a surprise that it's actually very, very simple to make. To prep the chickpeas, place one cup of dried chickpeas into a large bowl. Submerge the chickpeas with about two and a half liters of water. Let the chickpeas sit overnight. Half an onion, roughly chopped. Three pieces of garlic, peeled. Ten grams of parsley, loosely chopped. Ten grams of cilantro, loosely chopped. food processor. Strain out the chickpeas and add to the food processor. Garlic. Onions. Parsley and cilantro. Half teaspoon cumin. Half teaspoon baking soda. Two tablespoons coconut flour. You can use all-purpose flour here, but for today, we're going to keep it gluten-free and use a coconut flour, which will work really well. One tablespoon lemon juice. One tablespoon potato starch. One teaspoon salt. Pepper. Blend for about 45 seconds. Use an ice cream scoop to scoop out the mixture and shape them into balls. Repeat this process until you've gone through all the mixture. Frying pan. One and a half cups avocado oil. Medium heat. Heat up the oil for four to five minutes. Use a wooden or bamboo chopstick. If you see some bubbles, it's ready. Carefully place the falafel into the oil. Try not to overcrowd the falafel and cook them in two batches. Fry the falafel for two to three minutes on each side.
rest the falafel on the plate lined with paper towel. Carefully fry the second batch. While the falafel is resting and keeping nice and crispy, we're going to make that delicious dipping sauce. Mixing bowl. One piece garlic, grated. Three quarter cups, tahini. Five tablespoons, lemon juice. Whisk. Of course, if you find the dip too thick, just add more lemon juice. If you find it too thin, just add more tahini. Plate the dipping sauce. Garnish with freshly chopped parsley. plate. One more thing, I know avocado oil is quite pricey, so you can actually reuse it, just let it cool completely, and then strain it out, keep it in a jar, and you're good to go. You can now serve this delicious dish with absolute confidence. Preheat the oven to 350. Chop two pita bread into bite-sized pieces. Bake in the oven for a couple of minutes. Remember to set a timer so you won't forget about it. Half a red onion, thinly sliced. Three radishes, thinly sliced. Of course, we just have to make sure that they're nice and crispy. That's really nice and crispy. Now remember, for those crispy chips that we took the time to make, 
just leave them in the pan so they can gradually lower in temperature and that way they'll stay nice and crispy. If we just immediately throw it into a container or a bowl, it's going to trap some of that heat and create some condensation and then they'll just get those chips really soggy and that's definitely not what we want. Roughly chop one cucumber into bite-sized pieces. Chop one green bell pepper into small pieces. Slice in half about 200 grams of cherry tomatoes. Now for the romaine, be sure after you wash it that it's completely dry or else the dressing will just kind of drip off of the, the leaves. Wash and chop about 450 grams of romaine lettuce. Use a salad spinner to really dry off the romaine lettuce. This step is important because if your leaves are wet, it will dilute your dressing. This is definitely one of the best inventions ever. Salad spinner, amazing. You just have to make that easy and delicious dressing and your salad is good to go. This recipe is actually one of the recipes in the Cook with Confidence cookbook. 20 grams fresh mint. And of course, depending on the size of the romaine that you actually get, you may have to make a little bit more dressing or make a little bit less. It's completely up to your taste. And of course, to find out more information or to take a sneak peek of inside the book, I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can check that out or get your signed copy. Great one piece of garlic into a small jar. Half teaspoon salt. Two tablespoons sumac. Two tablespoons lemon juice. Four tablespoons olive oil.
give the jar a good shake and pour onto the salad. Toss. Plate. Top with crispy pita chips to your heart's delight. You can now enjoy this beautifully refreshing salad with absolute confidence. Two 400 ml cans of chickpeas. Pour out the chickpea water and save for other recipes. This is also known as aquafaba. There's no need to throw out that chickpea water or the aquafaba. You can make a delicious, thick mayonnaise recipe really easily at home. I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can check that out. Rinse the chickpeas with water. Food processor. Chickpeas. Three pieces of garlic. Third cup, tahini. Third cup, lemon juice. One teaspoon salt. Pepper. One cup water. Drizzle of olive oil. Blend for about 45 seconds. Plate half the hummus. Swirl. Half tablespoon smoked paprika. Quarter cup chopped olives. Sprinkle freshly chopped parsley. Slice the pomegranate in half over a bowl. Slice into quarters and carefully extract the seeds. I know one way to do it is to cut the pomegranate in half and just bang on the back of it with a wooden spoon, but kind of peeling around the seeds, you are able to kind of keep everything intact and it's kind of like you're discovering little deposits of gems. Sprinkle some pomegranate on top of the hummus. And drizzle with some olive oil. That looks absolutely beautiful. Like I said, you can make hummus as fancy as you like. You can now enjoy this delicious hummus with absolute confidence.
Today's episode is actually a companion video to the hummus recipe that's found in the Cook with Confidence Cookbook. And of course, if you'd like to find out more information to take a sneak peek inside the book or to order your signed copy, I'll leave a link in the description box below. We can check this out. Like I said, hummus is really kind of what you make of it. And if you're feeling up for it, definitely try it out with the one of my favorites, the not too spicy, but smoky ruby red chili oil made in the previous episode. I'll also leave a link in the description box below for you to check this out, make this really easily at home as well. Plate the remaining hummus. Swirl. One to two tablespoons chili oil. One teaspoon toasted sesame seeds. One teaspoon Korean pepper flakes, also known as gochugaru. Crumble over a few sheets of salted nori. You can now dip into this incredible hummus with absolute confidence. Hummus is just one of those dishes where you just take a bunch of simple, humble ingredients, it's a simple, humble process, and you can turn it into this visually stunning, beautiful, restaurant quality kind of dish. Let's try the traditional one first. Mm. That's the thing I love about hummus is just a burst of flavor every single bite. The hummus, the base of the hummus is really delicious. It has that beautiful kind of silky texture. It's velvety, it's garlicky, a little salty, and you taste that kind of nuttiness from the tahini. The olive oil really adds that delicious fruitiness. The smoked paprika adds that kind of smokiness, and the olives add that punch of flavor. The parsley just adds that freshness, but those pomegranate seeds, man, they just, they explode with this delicious sweetness that just brings everything together. And when you have it all in one bite, it just is this crazy, incredible, delightful explosion of flavor. That lemon juice that we put into the hummus just really gives it this incredible brightness and a little bit of a tanginess as well. Right, now for the young man cooking chili oil style hummus. Look at that, just fiery. Mm. Man, that is so crazy how different the two characteristics are for the two different hummus. The traditional one has kind of a lot of fresh flavors and that sweetness from the pomegranate. But this one, man, it's just like that punch of smoky and a little bit of a spicy flavor that just gets wrapped up in this delicious, velvety, garlicky hummus with that kind of brightness from the lemon juice. In this version of the hummus, the nori really gives it that extra oomph of umami, that saltiness. The toasted sesame seeds adds that kind of sesame aroma and the gochugaru, the Korean pepper powder, just adds that little bit more of that smokiness, a little bit of a spicy kick as well. You get that beautiful kind of golden ruby red color. And that chili oil adds that unmistakably delicious, aromatic, smoky flavor. This version is incredibly savory. That garlic goes so well with that chili oil. You really get an abundant amount of contrasting flavors in here. You get that smoky, the spicy, the salty, the garlicky, the brightness from the lemon juice and everything just combines together and really creates this literal explosion of flavor. Man, that chili oil hummus with the nori is just crazy delicious and beautiful, visually stunning. I think we should definitely officially call this the young man cooking hummus. I could literally take a picture of that, print it out and put it on my fridge. It's that visually stunning. 
If you love easy and delicious recipes like I do, then definitely check out the Vegan Ramen Cookbook or the Cook with Confidence Cookbook, of course, to take a sneak peek inside the books or to get your signed copy. I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can check that out. As always, remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you won't miss a single episode.